Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank Jeff and Stuart for giving us the opportunity at Cisco to come here and address all of you. And I wanted to share a message around connecting the unconnected. How as we move from the internet to the internet of things, or what you and GE call the industrial internet, to the internet of everything, we are going through a period in the future of unprecedented change, disruption, and transformation. But before I dive into it, I, I just wanted to share with you a bit about what Cisco's own vision is and what do we stand for as a company. And our vision is really about changing the way we live, work, learn, and play. And change is very much at the heart of who we are as a company. Every day, we focus on driving and enabling innovation to drive change to organizations, communities, businesses, and even countries. So it's something very near and dear to our heart. I know it's something that's very critical on your minds and that's very much a central theme of today's event as well. This change that we're going to go through is going to accelerate even more through the industrialization of the internet or the internet of things. Why do I say that? Let me give you a few data points. Today, about 39% of the world is connected. 39% of all of us as human beings on this planet are connected. We have over 80% of business processes that's going on in the world today that's driven through technology. And we generate more data in one year than we did over the last 5,000. And over 13 billion devices are connected today. I'm sure many of you in the room have at least more than two devices connected to the internet. I personally have probably four or five beyond my smart, two smartphones, an iPad, a Fitbit, a car, and a whole bunch of other things that we may not even realize is beginning, is beginning to get connected to the internet and is driving a tremendous amount of change. This coming together of people, processes, data, and things is coming together to create what we call the Internet of Everything or the Industrial Internet. If you look at what that's going to drive and how that's going to really change and transform the industries, the communities, the organizations we work with, let me give you, again, some additional data points. Our internal estimates that there is $19 trillion of what we call value at stake. And that's something for you to think about as you go through the rest of the day and as you leave after this session and go back to your jobs and figure out how, in the great roles that you have in GE, how can you really take advantage of this value at stake? What does value at stake mean? Through the Internet of Things, you can drive greater top-line revenue to improve productivity, efficiency, new innovation. You can drive cost reduction, again, through better proactive maintenance as an example. But equally important, value at stake is also a disruption, a shift of value from one industry to the other. And this Internet of Things is going to accelerate the disruption in terms of how value is going to move from one industry to another very quickly. A very good and simple example that most of you can relate to is the music industry, of how in the past value sort of accrued to record labels and companies that distributed CDs, of old vinyl records for the audiophile aficionados in you, but very quickly through technology, through the internet, through things like the I iTunes and iPod, that whole industry has transformed. It's been disrupted. And we're going to see that happen at a faster pace than ever before. So $19 trillion of value at stake. Top line, that includes top line revenue, cost reduction, and shift in value from one industry to the other. So something to take note of. And if you break that down further, we estimate that probably 14.4 trillion of that is in the private sector, and about 4.6 trillion of that value at stake will be in the public sector. You may also say, well, maybe that's sort of fairly futuristic. And I, I know that's not the case with this audience, because looking at some of the videos that I saw just prior to coming up here, I think you realize, and through the work that GE itself is doing in the industrial internet, that the Internet of Things is here 
and it is now. As we drive connectivity through devices deeper and deeper, broader and broader, we are collecting massive amounts of data that's giving us tremendous amounts of visibility to drive greater productivity, efficiency, better safety and security. At the same time, this data is giving us greater insight so we can redefine business processes, create innovation and drive disruption in our industries as well. I wanted to highlight three simple examples of how the Internet of Everything is being deployed. Three industries that are very familiar to probably many of you. One, the oil and gas industry. Today, the Internet of Things and Internet of Everything is, being, is helping the oil and gas industry drive more connectivity into far-flung production platforms and production facilities through remote collaboration technologies, remote to machine to machine sensors that gives all of us better visibility to proactively manage production platforms, pipelines. In fact, in a recent GE study that you commissioned yourself, the finding was that if you could improve 1%, by 1%, if you could reduce capital expenditure by 1% through IoT efficiencies in the oil and gas industry, you could help them save $90 billion over a 15-year period. And that's your own study. So as you go back, think about what you can do in the oil and gas industry, which is fairly big in the Malaysian context. Look at transportation. How do we use the Internet of Things to drive greater public safety and security, better customer experience, better information and better connectivity between different modes of transport as we move from private vehicle to rail to buses to taxis? At the same time, utilities. Again, smart grids are enabling <clears throat> utility companies to better determine the amount of spinning capacity they need to generate at different times of the day. It's also benefiting consumers because it gives them a more competitive marketplace to con buy and consume energy from. In a recent IDC report that was done this year, they estimate that the amount of IoT-related revenue that's created through te IoT-related technology and services will amount to roughly about $4.8 billion, that amounted to $4.8 billion in 2012, and will increase to $7.3 billion by the year 2017. So it's a massive opportunity for all the companies that are associated in this place. What are we doing in Cisco around this as well? Just to give you a few examples, and to challenge you beyond just the traditional areas that you may be thinking of. In Australia, we're working with mining companies to help them solve a very simple but fundamental issue they have. One, it costs a lot of money to hire a truck driver in Western Australia because nobody wants to work in some of these iron ore plants. They make about 150,000 Australian dollars a year just to drive a truck. But we're using the Internet of Things to help them create autonomous trucks so they can automate their supply chain, solve a labor shortage issue, solve a cost issue. We're also working with the city of Ho Chi Minh as they deploy a new metro about how do they use the Internet of Everything to deliver better citizen services, safety and security, better information, and drive greater connectivity across the different modes of transport that they're deploying throughout and hoping to create what they hope to create through a smart city in Ho Chi Minh. And finally, transforming also economies. We're working closely with the government of Korea. What do they want to do? And many of us would think that Koreans are extremely advanced if you look at the, what the, they're doing in terms of the field of electronics. But the government of Korea wants to see how they can use the Internet of Everything to transform their economy from a very manufacturing-based economy to an innovation-based economy. You may ask why. The reality is that in Korea, because it's a very heavy manufacturing-based economy, it is, but it's so automated that many of the young people in Korea don't have jobs. Even if they wanted to work in manufacturing plants, there aren't any to be hired because all you have is rows and rows of machines working 24 by 7, never ever stopping. And so the government is concerned about how do they drive more innovation into the economy? How do they tap that tremendous amount of brain power, creativity in the youth in Korea to give them something to aspire to and continue to keep Korea as a country ahead and moving forward? And so they're asking us to see 
how we can partner with them in terms of driving an IUE gateway, IUE academies, working with some of the large conglomerates, local SMBs and governments in a spirit of partnership to really enable what the innovation that the Internet of Everything can deliver. But building the Internet of Everything is not something that one company can do on its own. It's about building an ecosystem. So as we think through about how we take advantage of the tremendous potential that's created by these new processes, by these new insights, by the efficiencies that we can gain, the productivity that we can gain, we also need to understand what are the new sort of ecosystems that we need to develop. One is around best-in-class technology. This is about understanding the ecosystems that we need to bring together to develop vertical solutions products and services, and also underlying architectures in order to make all these pieces of the ecosystem work together. Second is around looking from the customer in, understanding what the customer's business outcomes are that they want to achieve. How do we help them enable it? How does the internet of everything or the industrial internet really help them address the core business outcomes that they want to achieve and drive? And finally, strategic partnerships. This is about looking at partnerships that we would not traditionally look at. And if you take us as an example, our traditional partnerships will be probably around system integrators, maybe some around software companies. But actually, we were very honored to have your chairman and CEO, Jeff Immelt, with us two weeks ago at a CIO summit. And GE is having conversations with us as well at the, at the very senior most levels around how do we work together, an IT company, working with a company that's traditionally known for leadership in technology, in industry, coming together. So these are the kinds of new strategic partnerships that you need to be looking at and developing as we move forward into this next new area of innovation, change and transformation that's enabled through the Internet of Everything. So what does it mean at the end of the day? You've heard a lot of nice, interesting things. But at the end of the day, it's driving transformation through delivering better outcomes. It's about how do we improve the experiences of our clients, of our citizens, of our employees that we can deliver through greater productivity and efficiency through the Internet of Things, being much more personalized in everything that we do and in the services that we deliver to them. Second is how do we fuel innovation? This could be business process innovation. This could be new products and solutions that we develop through greater insight that we can get through how people are using things, how do we disrupt certain markets through new innovations as well. Increasing efficiency, driving greater productivity, driving greater utilization of assets, especially, for example, if you're in the aircraft industry or any very heavy fixed asset-based industry. How do you drive greater utilization of your fixed asset to drive greater efficiency at the end day? Creating new markets. One of the great things about the Internet of Everything is about the ability to extend reach without actually being physically present. It's about creating new markets through extending your geographical reach. It's about creating new markets through disruptive business models or adjacent market, moving into adjacent markets as well. It's how do you unlock intelligence? As, as you saw from one of the earlier data points I gave you, we generate more data today than we've done over the last 5,000 years. How do we make sense of that data? How do we drive insight and use that intelligence to transform, to change, and to disrupt? And finally, how do we also minimize risk? Because everything that we do, when we start to connect everything, when everything's interconnected, how do we do that in a safe and secure manner that drives privacy, that drives data sovereignty, that drives the underlying security that we need to provide to all the products and solutions that we deliver together. So with that, I ask that you think about what I've shared with you today. Challenge yourself as you go back into your day-to-day -day work, but also look at the tremendous amount of potential as GE moves forward through the industrialization of the internet.